Hello and welcome to my channel Rapid Vectors. In this tutorial I will show you how to create an access key with a simple inventory system and a door that can be used with the access key and transition to the next scene. If you like what you see in this tutorial please remember to hit like or subscribe to receive updates of my future tutorials. Let's begin by going to the levels folder, opening up level 1 and then we'll just zoom in on the door. So we'll create an open and close animation and a key pickup so that when the player collects the key and then approaches the door, the animation will begin and then the player can pass through the door and be transitioned to the next scene. So open the door folder under levels and load the door scene. And as you can see, we have a single sprite which has gate 03 PNG in there. Now this was made in a previous tutorial. And what we're going to do, we're going to now add the animated sprite 2D. So let's do that, add child node, choose animated sprite 2D, and we'll just move that just below the sprite 2D. We'll just turn the sprite 2D off for now, and then head over to Warped Files, Asset Collection, under PNG, Environment and Props folder, we want to take gate 01 and gate 02, and just drag that into the door folder. Then on the animated sprite 2D, Let's create some new sprite frames and click that. Then rename this to be open and then drag in the sprites into the sprite frames. So it will be gate 01 first, then gate 02, and then gate 03. So that will open the door. We'll just leave that on looping now and then let's just test that. So that looks fine. And we can leave that at five frames per second as well. I'll turn animation looping off, add a new animation, and we'll rename that and we'll call that close. Then let's drag the assets into the sprite frames, but in reverse order. So we want gate 03, gate 02, and gate 01. We'll just leave that on looping for now, and we'll just test that as well. So as you can see, that will close. Let's stop that, and then turn looping off. And the first animation we want to play is the close animation so that all the doors will be closed. We don't want looping on because it's only a one-time animation. And then on the animation, turn centered off and let's just position that back into the correct place. So we'll just check that it's sitting on the x-axis and against the y-axis. The exit area is still in the correct place. So if we just turn off animated sprite 2D and just turn on sprite 2D, as you can see, that's now correct. One thing that we need to check is that animated sprite 2D is on the correct Z index because in the previous tutorial, we saw that when the player was running through the door, because of the Z index order, the player ran in front or at the side of the door. So it didn't look like the player was going through it. So what we'll do is we'll just check the animated sprite 2D is on the Z index. And because a player is on Z index zero, we'll put this to one and the player will disappear behind the door as they run through it. Now let's go to the levels folder again and just go to test levels and open up the test level. As we can see, we still have the door on here and let's just run our test level again. So the door is closed and as we run towards it, the player can still go through the door. So what we need to do, we need to change the type of body that this door is. So let's just close that. Go back to door. First, remove Sprite 2D as we don't need that anymore. So we'll just delete that node. And then on the door root node, just right click, change type, and search for static body 2D. Once you've found that, just change the type of node. Now, a static body 2D is another type of physics body 2D. It has some properties similar to a character body 2D in that it is affected by physics. However, the static body 2D can't be moved by external forces and it's not affected by other bodies in its path. So when the character moves to the door, they will collide into the door and not go through the door. Now, when we have a key, we will be able to modify the static body so that the player will then pass through that. So let's click door and let's add another child node and then choose collision shape 2D and that will remove the warning. 
and then on the shape let's choose rectangle shape 2d the collision shape we've just added is sitting behind the animated sprite so i'm just going to turn the z index off for now it'll just make it much easier for us to see the exit area and the collision shape and now we've got this collision shape for the static body 2d let's just position that i'm just going to position it just so that it covers the door and then for animated sprite i'll just select this open animation so i can just see the other sprite then click collision shape just to get the correct position for it i'm just going to put it about here then move the collision shape so it's just above the exit area click on door and just check the collision layer and mask now the door will treat this like it's ground because you can't fall through the ground and the player can't go through the door so we'll use the same layer so we'll use ground and for the mask we'll leave that on layer one two our next area to add is the activate door area and this is when the player will move into the area with the key and it should open the door so we'll go door add child node search for area 2d again and then f2 and we'll rename this to be activate door area 2d and then we'll do another collision shape for this so search for collision shape as a child node and then in the shape let's do a new rectangle shape but we'll just do a different debug color for it so that we can see our different collision shapes for this particular node then let's just move this into position we'll just make it longer and then let's just make the area a little bit wider so this is the area that the player steps into and activates the door now click on activate door area 2d and let's set up the collision in a previous tutorial we set up those layers so let's just check if we open that we have a doors layer let's pop this area on the doors layer and then uncheck the ground layer and then in the mask we want to check the player layer and uncheck the ground layer so that the activate door will be listening to the player and with activate door area still selected just click the node tab and we want to create two signals so click body entered and connect and we'll connect that to the door script and then we want to also select body exited and connect that script too so in the unactivate door area body entered method what we want to do is say if body dot is in group player and then we'll say if the door is not open and at the top let's create that variable so it'll be a var door open which is type bool then what we want to is to get the animated sprite 2d and play an animation from that so we'll just tick the animated sprite 2d node and hold control down and bring that into our script and just scroll back down and call animated sprite 2d and then play the open animation once the animation is playing we can then set door open equals true and then we want to get hold of our collision shape that's attached to the static body so I'll bring that into the script as an on ready variable and scroll back down to the script and say collision shape 2d dot set deferred is disabled equals true now the collision shape 2d will also have a property of disabled but by setting that to true does not turn off the collision shape so you must use set deferred to deactivate the collision shape and that will allow the player to run through the door now let's update the onActivate door area 2d body exited method so we'll say if body dot is in group player and this time say if door open then animated sprite 2d dot play animation close door open equals false and let's just turn on visible collision shapes then go to test level and then test the scene as you can see we've got the static body area the area that activates the scene transition and the area to activate the door so if we just step into the area the animation has now played let's just stop that 
And let's just turn visible collision shapes off and just quickly test that again. And it'll just be a little bit clearer to see this animation. The door is open and door is now closed. What we want to do though is have a key so that the door stays closed and the player will hit into the door. Let's just close that. And the player picks up items such as keys. We need to store them in an inventory. So what we'll do, just go to the scripts folder and create a new script and call this inventory manager. Let's open that script and then go to project, project settings, auto load tab, and then open the script, go to scripts folder, inventory manager, open. Once that has been added and enabled, we can click close. We will create a very simple inventory system so that when the player comes into contact with the key, we can store that. And then when the player comes into contact with the door, the door will be able to pull the key and use it to unlock the door. Let's create a variable called inventory, which is type of dictionary. Create a new function called add to dictionary with two variables, type, which is string and value, which is also a string. Then we want to access the inventory. We want to pass the type, which is the key of the array. And we want to then pass a value. Then we'll create another function called has inventory item, but we will return a bool. Then say var item equals inventory dot find key by the value. Then say if item and return true. And if nothing can be found, return false. So this inventory manager is not very advanced, but it is enough to demonstrate how to hold the key. And then later we'll see being able to use the key. So our next step is to create the key. So go scene, new scene, 2D scene, and then rename this to the key. Let's add another child node and choose Sprite 2D. Then go back to the levels folder, create a new folder and call this keys. Open the folder and let's save our scene. We'll save this into the keys folder and just save that. Then in your assets pack, open up the Kenny Pixel Platformer pack. We've used this in another previous tutorial. Open up the tiles folder and we'll use the key. I will leave the link in the description to get this pack. Drag this into your folder. And then on the sprite node in the inspector, just assign that texture to the key. So I'll just go to 2D, assign the texture and just zoom in. We'll leave this sprite centered and we'll add another child node to the key root node. Search for area 2D and add a child node to the area 2D and choose collision shape. In the shape option, choose new circle shape 2D and we can give this a different debug color and we'll leave it at that size. Click back on area 2D and let's set up the collision shape. Open up the layers panel and add a new layer and call this keys. Close that. Then turn on option seven for keys and option two for player. Click back on key and attach a script. And we'll just leave that called key and create that in the folder. Click back on the area 2D node and then click the node tab. And we want to connect the body entered signal and we'll connect that to our script. The first thing we want to do is export a variable and we'll call this key ID. So this key will get some identification and it will help when we add it to the inventory. Then in the on area, body entered method we'll use the same if body dot is in group player and this time we'll get our inventory manager and we'll add to the inventory so for the first parameter let's give a key for the dictionary so we'll say key one then pass in key id and once the item's been added to the inventory we just remove the key from the scene by writing Q3. So once the key has been added to the inventory, we need to go back to door, go to the door script. And when the player enters the door area, we need to see if they have the item in the inventory. So in this method, we will say var 
has item which is bool and then say inventory has inventory item and then key id so we need to create that parameter and we'll use another export variable called key id which is string then go back to the activate door area function and we'll just check if the player doesn't have this key item then don't do anything else just return from the method so we won't process opening the door now before we finish this script we do need to assign the key id to the door so that a specific key will open that door so we need to check inside the inventory manager if this value is correctly set so we can say if value equals null then just return false so we make sure that we are setting some key id on the door now head over to the test level and for the door let's just move that below the player one of the things we want to check is whether the player is still running in front of the door then head over to the levels folder in keys let's now drag the key scene onto our test level we'll just move this key so it's next to door and then just add a child node and just use the very base class node because this has no position properties and we can just use it like a folder let's rename that we'll just call it door one then let's click on the key and we're just going to give this a simple key of one two three four five let's click on the door and we'll use the same id so one two three four five and what we're going to check is if the player has that specific key for that door because they might have many different keys and many different doors in a specific level let's just run the game now when i pick up the key or actually let's jump over the key so i can't go through the door i'll jump back over the key again let's pick up the key and let's now move into this area so the door has now opened for us and when we go in there scene transition has now worked and has now transitioned us to level one let's stop that I will now add this to my level one so i'll open up level one i'm just going to place a key here so i'll put the key into the scene i've already got a door here which has now been updated so i'll leave that here as it is i will then move the key below the player i will create another child node i'll call this door one and then I'll just group those two items into there. So if I zoom out, we are just using this as a folder because it doesn't affect the position transforms of these two items. So I can have my key here and my door over here, but it's easier now to move these around in my scene tree if I need to. So let me test the game. I'll put this in full screen for now and let's play. So I've now jumped onto the top ledge to pick up the key. I'll now jump up and then run along towards the door. And then I'll just go into the door. And now I'm in level two and that's working nicely. Now this brings us to the end of this tutorial on how to create an animated door with an access key that can be held in an inventory and then transition to the next scene. If you like what you've seen in this tutorial, please remember to hit like or subscribe to receive updates of my future tutorials. Thank you for watching.